So what's a credit default swap? Well, simply put, it's a risk transfer. Let's say a person buys debt and they want to make sure that debt is secure. Well, they go to an outside party, a bank or insurance company, and they pay a fee to the financial entity to issue what's called a credit default swap. And if something happens that this debt cannot be paid, the financial entity is responsible for covering that lost debt to the person who bought the credit default swap. Basically, it is transferring the risk from the person who purchases the debt to the company that issues the credit default swap. Okay, let's say there's this company Orange, and it wants to raise money. So it issues out debt to this person, and it's in the form of a bond. Now over time, as I've talked about previously, this person is going to expect two things, principal and interest. Principal is the original amount of money that he's paid for the bond, and the interest is the fee for lending the money from to the company Orange in the first place. So here was the issue. If you remember from my podcast on credit rating agencies, I mentioned there was a limitation on the bond market for certain types of funds. Remember funds like pension funds, sovereign funds, or general funds could only invest in debt products that had low risk, meaning that the only type of debt that they could buy had to be high quality or rated triple A. So let's take an example. Let's assume that the state of New Jersey has some assets like some stocks and bonds and cash and it gives this money to an investment manager and it says do something with our money, create some decent return. Well the investment manager puts this money into a sovereign wealth fund. Now the investment manager is looking for a good place to invest these New Jerseyan assets. Here was the dilemma though. Legally, he could only purchase high quality or triple A rated debt, but there wasn't enough high quality debt out there because remember, the giant pool of money, which included a high inflow of sovereign wealth funds, had grown in size. So let's say this investment manager stumbled on Company Orange. There's plentiful debt to buy from Company Orange. It's selling a bond that will mature in 10 years for $1,000. The problem, it's not rated high quality, only okay, and legally this investment manager cannot purchase any debt that is not high quality because it could pose a risk to the fund. But there is a potential solution to fix this problem. There is an insurance company and its debt is rated high quality. What it can do is offer to issue a credit default swap or sell credit de- protection for Company Orange's debt. This guarantees that Company Orange will not default on their debt, or if they do, this highly rated insurance company will come in and pay the full value of the bond. This guarantees that this debt is 100 percent safe to purchase. In return for covering the risk of this 10-year bond, the investment manager must pay the highly rated insurance company a fee of let's say $10 for every year the bond is good. That means that every year the credit default swap provider receives $10, which means that in the 10th year, if Company Orange is unable to pay the debt it promised, the insurance company must cough up the full value of the bond, which is $1,000, and pay it to the investment manager. Otherwise, If in the 10th year company Orange is able to honor its debt, the financial institution gets a nice profit of $100. How were they able to circumvent the fact that the bond was rated low quality? Well, here's what it was. An okay quality bond plus an approval from a highly rated financial institution that the bond was 100% safe or that they would cover the full value of the bond if the company went under equals a high quality bond. Does this sound familiar? Paying fees on a regular basis in case there's a risk catastrophe? It's because it is familiar. It's something that we deal with every single day in our entire lives. And that's an insurance policy. But that was a secret. People in Wall Street didn't want to call it insurance because if they did, it would be subject to the regulation of federal and state laws. And the difference between insurance and credit default swaps is that every time an insurance policy is issued, you have to have the cash reserve necessary to back it up. With credit default swaps, on the other hand, the cash reserve required before issuing these products was minimal. To review. Credit default swaps started out as this insurance-like product for investments that many thought would not go under. They were not called insurance so that they could be exempt from the laws of insurance regulation. They were not required to put out as many cash reserves as insurance companies, which placed them in a vulnerable situation. Coming up, how the CDS market 
went downhill. Thanks for watching. To learn more or watch more podcasts, visit www.subprimethemusical.wordpress.com.